There's good news for us today, and it comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus encourages disciples to invest their hearts and life fully into God's reign. Instead of facing life with fear, those who know God's generosity are always ready to receive from God and to give to others. Now the reading. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves who the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let this house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, that he will living in the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lives of the saints are remembered and admired by many people like Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Billy Graham, and others maybe not so well known, but even those saints who have been family and friends, we admire them for their witness and consider them the exception. But what if they were not the exception? What if they were the rule? What if every Christian worked tirelessly for justice, cared for the poor with fashion, and lived by the values taught by Jesus. Certainly the world would be a very different place, not perfect for sure, but much more caring and loving and accepting. And a place where there would probably be much less violence, fewer wars, if any, and less crime. A friend of mine says that his diagnosis of the church in our nation is one where we reflect more the values of the world than we do the values of the kingdom that Jesus taught. 
Jesus says in our gospel today, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we can, in one way, in understanding the Christian faith, think of ourselves as living under the rule of our King, Christ, who teaches and lives the values of the kingdom. They are down to earth, practical, and there are at least three that are present in today's gospel reading. The first value of the kingdom is that under the reign of Christ, it means that we are to consider ourselves ma managers of the king's property. Now, it's not a sin to be rich or to have nice things. But a manager partners with the owner to accomplish what the owner wants. But when we claim for ourselves what belongs to the owner, what belongs to God, things get messy. The wealth we claim fuels our appetite for more and more. And we are tempted to act dishonestly in ways that hurt others. It breeds justice, injustice, and conflict. The goal becomes to increase one's wealth and thereby one's power and opportunity. But living under the reign of Christ, wealth becomes a resource for accomplishing Christ's mission. The goal is to love one another as Christ has loved us. This includes, includes loving ourselves and our family and extends out from there to our community, our nation, and the world. One of the concerns in our world today, which we often hear of, is that the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and the middle class is becoming fewer and fewer. And it's not just in our nation, but any many parts of the world as well. Like me, you probably each week receive several pieces of mail asking you for donations to a cause. There are many causes to consider. We call it charity, which is actually distributing God's resources to accomplish God's purpose. Yes, it is worth considering that the cure for greed is generosity. The second value of the kingdom in our gospel today is that under the reign of Christ, it means that we are to be ready for action. Engaging in those spiritual exercises that keep us tuned in to the kingdom way of life. And then turning our attention to the world into which God sends us to make a difference. Being informed about our community and the world. Ready to engage with those in need, whether they be poor, sick, or in prison. It involves, it involves relationships of understanding. So that we can discern between when it is time to give people fish to eat. And when it is time to teach people to fish. It is action that leads to more justice and more peace in the world. Actions that unites people and embraces our common humanity. The third value in today's gospel is that under the reign of Christ, living under that reign, means understanding ourselves to be servants. 
the gospel speaks of a reversal of roles. The master serving a meal to the slaves who have awaited his return. Where is it that our status is seen by others as having some kind of authority over them? It may be in our family as a parent or a grandparent, as a community leader, at work, or maybe we are a supervisor or employer. There are times when we are looked upon for guidance and directions. But what would a reversal of roles in that situation look like? To do yourself what you would ask others to do. Teachers realize again and again and again that they have much to learn from their students. And leaders cannot truly lead without being a part of those whose lives they lead. A restaurant manager might take a day to be a cook or a waiter. A mayor might spend time with firefighters or refuse workers. And we can certainly find ways to put ourselves among others who we may not always understand or realize their value. Christ advises the citizens of his kingdom, do not be afraid. And you can imagine us being fearful. In living these values, we would be very different from those around us. We may be criticized and ostracized, but as citizens of the kingdom are people of faith. And faith is that simple trust in God who has partnered with us to accomplish God's purpose. We're told faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith keeps our king's dreams alive in us. When we want to give up, when we face opposition or criticism, and when Christ was born in Bethlehem, called the Prince of Peace, it was a reversal of roles. For the Son of God has become human. The King becomes a citizen of the kingdom. He is found among the poor, the sick, the sinners, addressing injustice, forgiving sin, and affirming people's dignity and humanity living in ways that were valued relationships above wealth, taking time to spend in prayer, then turning again to the world and its overwhelming needs. He came to serve, not to be served, and even shows us how to die with dignity by commending his spirit to God on the cross and in rising from the dead, affirms that the kingdom of which he rules is not bound by time and space, but is moving towards that time when all that God wants will be accomplished. And we will see with our own eyes what the scriptures proclaim and what Christ our King has made possible. Amen.